Hello, this video four of chapter four about the theory of groups. And in this video, we're going to solve exercise 35 in which we look at cyclic groups. So as always, first, please pause the video, uh, read the exercise, try to solve it on your own, look at the definitions, which is always the most important part of the lectures. And once you've either solved the exercise or you have struggled with it enough time, come back to the video and see how this is done. OK, good. So here we're working with the work, the group of invertible elements in Z over 11 Z. So we're working modulo. And the binary operation is multiplication. This group is also sometimes denoted by F11 star. So let me write it like this so that you know uh, we work in F11 star with the multiplication. OK, so that's the other notation that we'll, we'll be using in these lectures for the group of invertible elements when the number, the modulo we're working with is a prime number. OK, it has 10 elements that has 10 elements, right? So the invertible elements are 1, 2, 3, up to 10 elements. And the group is commutative, right? And the group is commutative. Is commutative. All right. Maybe let us start by finding the inverses for all the elements. So let me write them all here. We have one, two. So let me write it. This is G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. These are all the elements. And now let us write below the inverses. Some of them can be found by head very easily. So the inverse of one is one, right? Let me show you how I do this. For example, for two, I can notice that uh, two times five is 10, right? So it's minus one. And therefore, two times minus five is one, okay? So the inverse of two is minus five, minus five is six, okay? So the inverse of two is six, and therefore the inverse of six is two, right? Let us continue like this. Three, I can notice that three times four is 12, modulo 11, that's one. So the inverse of three is four. Therefore, the inverse of four is three. Same idea, the inverse of five, exactly doing the same calculation. It should be minus two, right? Minus two is nine. So the inverse of five is nine. The inverse of nine is five. 10 is minus one. So for example, if you want to do 10, yeah, it corresponds to minus one, minus one to the square is one, so it is on inverse, okay? And then we're just left with seven and eight, and seven times eight is equal to one modulo 11, so here we have all the inverses, okay? Good. Now let us find the orders of the elements. If we want to find the orders of the elements, the best thing that we should do is to use Euler's theorem, right? For the orders, for the orders, Euler's theorem. So remember, Euler's theorem is saying that the possible orders are the divisors of the number of elements of the group. Here we have 10 elements. So possible orders are one, two, five, and 10. These are the only possible orders. Therefore, when we want to find uh, if an element were the order of an element, we will just compute that element to the power two and that element to the power five. And if we do not find one for any of those two, it means that the order is 10. Okay, so let us just do this again. Let's write, or perhaps I just can make some space here and I write the, okay. The orders, I can put the orders here, order of G. Okay, so that's the first line. Here we have the second line. And here we have the third line, right? So for the orders of G, okay, 
good. Let's start by one. Well, for one, it's obvious. One to the power one is equal to one. So the order of the class one is the number one, okay? For two, we can co compute two to the power two is equal to four. So that's not one, right? And two to the power five. Well, let's uh, perhaps use a, a computer for this. Uh, so I'm, you're not going to be seeing the computations as uh, I make them, but and use a, any computer that you want or any, any way of computing power. So two power five modulo 11, and that's equal to 10, okay? So that's 10, which is not one, and therefore the order of two is 10, because there's no other options, okay? It's 10, okay? And immediately we can have another order uh, that we can deduce from this. Also, the order of G is always equal to the order of its inverse g minus one okay so this is an exercise that you should try to prove that the order of an element and its inverse is the same and therefore we can also compute uh, complete here that the order of six should also be 10 okay it means that two and six are both generators of the group okay and we will maybe see in a second uh, this in a more explicit way let's continue now let's do the same for three Okay, so three to the square is nine. Nine is not one, right? And um, three to the power five. So again, use your favorite way of computing these things, and you will find that three to the power five is equal to one. Okay, so the order of uh, three is five or the order of four is five as well. Okay, same thing, let's continue. For the order of five, five to the square is 25. 25 is three, so it's not one, right? And if you do five to the power five, uh, let's see, we do this calculation. You also get one, okay? So the order and five to the power five, is one, so therefore the order of five is five, therefore the order of nine is also five here. The order of 10 is obvious, as we said, because it's its own inverse, so 10 to the power two is one, okay? So here we have two, maybe I can write it here, 10 to the square is one, right? And for seven and eight, maybe we can be smart about it because seven, is in fact the same as minus four, right? And it, it, we know how it works for, for, or maybe we can do eight if you want. Eight is the same as minus three, and we know the powers of three, and therefore eight to the power uh, five is equal to minus three to the power five, which is minus one, okay? So it has to be the case, which is not one. So the order of eight is also 10. And therefore the order of its inverse is also 10. Okay, good. So now we found the orders of all elements. <clears throat> and we see that this group is cyclic as uh, if you read the lecture notes, you know that whenever the modulo we're working with is a prime number, the group of invertible elements with multiplications is always a cyclic group. And it has four generators. The generators are two, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Uh, so to end the exercise, it asks that for the generators, check explicitly that they generate all elements. So let's do this in the table. Uh, let us put it here. So let me take the element uh, g to the power. Okay, let's. Uh, erase here and put for two. So here we're going to take n equal one. So two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
and 10, okay? We do, we'll do the same for two, we'll do the same for the inverse of two, that is, we say six, six here. So let's start by two. Two to the power two is, two to the power one is two, here is four, so we multiply by two every time. Here it's eight, then 16, which is five. Here it's 10, which is minus one. So we'll always be at minus one when we're in the middle of the cycle, you see. Uh, then we multiply by two is 20, that therefore is nine, 18 is seven, 14 is three, three times two, six, and six times two. Okay, so you notice here that we have all elements of the group, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So indeed two is a generator of the group. Six is the inverse element of two. So we will have exactly the same sequence, but just read in the opposite direction, okay? It starts at six here, and then you will just have the same direction, okay? So here you will have three, seven, nine, 10, five, eight, four, two, and one, okay? And the other two generators, so we have to do it for seven and for eight. Let's do it for seven. So we start at seven, then we multiply by seven each time, seven times seven, 49, so that's five, seven times five, 35, which is uh, two, seven times two, 14, three, then seven times three, 21. 21 is the same as 10. You see, again, in the middle, we find 10, which is minus one, right? And to the power six, so it's 70, which is four here. Four times seven, 28. Six, seven times six, 42, which is 33, nine times 963, which is 55 plus 8, and 7 times 8, 1, okay? So again, you can check that you have all the elements of the group that work, and for 8, as I told you, since it's the inverse of 7, you have exactly the same sequence, but read in the opposite direction, 8, 9, 6, 4, 8, 10, 3, 2, 5, 7, Okay, good. So that completes a uh, exercise about cyclic groups. Uh, it doesn't get much more difficult than that, what we do with cyclic groups. Uh, just remember to use Euler's theorem to find the possible orders, and those are the only powers that you need to compute when you're checking for an, uh, an element to be a generator or not of the group.